Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Java video. Today I want to talk about uh, some ideas around uh, observability, remediation and troubleshooting. So basically I want to talk about how we can build a sort of a groovy console around um, a Spring Boot application. You might be wondering why is that interesting because um, Sometimes you want to troubleshoot an application or you want to fix something. And uh, oftentimes you cannot just trust what is on the operational system uh, or, or in, in the file system, right? Because that's a sort of a higher level um, view of the problem, right? Sometimes you really need to get what's the spring being value and that's like exactly what you need, right? Uh, at the same time, it's a bit controversial because you do not want to expose uh, your applications by any means. You really do not want to, uh, you know, have any security breach or anything like that. So this um, definitely, you know, needs to be uh, hidden. It needs to be internal. I also would say that you want to apply security groups and, uh, you know, user password tokens, put all the security around to make sure that only uh, your authorized personnel can have access to that. So, you know, you don't have uh, issues. Um, but this is a powerful tool. And the reason why I say it's a powerful tool, because if you think about it, right, in observability, you're going to have logs, which uh, could be great if you use it well. Uh, but then, you know, metrics are better, uh, dashboards, uh, but on the top of the, of the chain, I would say that is a queryable interface, right? You, you being able to run queries and ask any other question you can, right? And with this sort of uh, idea here, you're going to be able to do that, right? So uh, I just want to give uh, the credits to Garber Bata. I basically, uh, you know, was heavily inspired by his... Uh, Groovy Web Console uh, GitHub repository, and uh, he has a Spring Boot application with that. Um, however, in his um, um, GitHub, he's using Java 11, and what I did was to adapt his ideas to Java 8. So I have the same working with uh, Java 8, but I want to give all the credits to Garbor Data. Um, okay, so let's go to the code and then um, later on uh, we can run the console and play with it, right? Or, or queryable inter interface for Spring applications. So there's a bunch of things here. Uh, I'm going to link uh, in my blog post and you're going to have uh, full source code and also you can check Skyboard that it's not really that different. But um, I, I just want uh, to highlight some pieces so I have an idea and later on, you know, you can look in all the days. It's not that big, actually. So we have an application, right? Uh, oh, okay. So, sorry, let's start with the dependencies first, right? So in sense of dependencies, you see here we have a Spring Boot application, 2.5.2. Right now Spring is 2.5.6, but uh, it, it definitely works with a newer version. It's not a problem uh, at all. Um, here what we have, all right? So we have Spring Booter, Starter Web, Actuator. Uh, this is for test, it doesn't matter. And we have Groovy, all right? Groovy is used uh, because of scripting powers, but uh, honestly, it could be Java itself. There is some uh, frameworks that allow you to compile, run Java on the fly. Uh, it could be Python, you know, in the JVM you can, you can, uh, you have Jython. It could be Ruby, in the JVM we have JRuby. Uh, could be closure, could be any uh, JVM language, uh, actually. Um, here is Groovy because, you know, I'm piggy banking on what Gabor uh, that I did, and uh, uh, that's why it's Groovy, but really you can use the same ideas to any uh, dynamic language on the top of JVM. Okay, so I have an application, classical Spring Boot class, so it's annotated as Spring Boot, it auto-enable configurations, and there is a component scan in my package. Uh, then uh, there's the classical main where we do application run. Uh, here we have some com command line runner just to print that the app's ready. 
And here there's an uh, utility code. Uh, we really don't need that, right? But uh, it, I, I found it very useful. Uh, it prints the configs. So it shows all the active properties when it boot ups. And I think that's useful information to know, right? But actually for the console, um, you do not need that, but the, that's good to know because uh, you can use these properties on the code, right? And you can check for values of these properties. That's why also for observability, it is uh, useful. Okay, then we have a service called Application Context Provider. And what the service does uh, is named Application Context Provider is a Spring Boot Application Context uh, Holder. It's used so we can you, you can leverage this class on our Groovy application in order to have access to the Spring Boot uh, context. So in order to do that, uh, this class needs to uh, implement Application Context Aware. And uh, once it does that, uh, it's going to initialize and play as the instance of the application context here. Uh, and then there is a method called static called get application context. And we want that because we want to have access to that. And there is some utility methods like print configs. That's exactly the same code on the boot up, but you can call it anytime. Uh, and get all configs, uh, which will transform all the property sources into a map. Uh, and then we can get configs as a map. So it's also a utility method. Okay. Um, and, um, now let's look uh, to the core of the thing. So there's this, uh, hello controller. I just put a standard controller here, simulating my application, right? You might have like your rest endpoints doing, um, you know, JDBC or JPA work with hibernate or you know, JDBC or Cassandra or whatever. That's all fine. So this is like the normal part of the application. And here is the observability part. So we have this uh, groovy uh, console uh, controller, right? And uh, the mapping is the slash uh, console. It's the controller, uh, implements application context aware. Here we have a timeout uh, for the script. Um, and um, this class uh, does the processing. So um, if, if you hit the index of this class, there is a redirect for a, a JavaScript uh, UI, which I'm going to show in a moment. And if you hit slash groovy, so slash console slash groovy, then you're going to pass your code and that code is going to be executable. So there is a completable future. So it runs async and basically uh, figure out what groovy scripts needs to run, um, creates a shell and evaluate that and uh, return, all right? So here's how we create a shell um, with configurations and bindings. Bindings in Groove is how you can have uh, predefined uh, variables and functions there. And one of the bindings that I'm creating is for uh, application context. So you can use my bin and uh, you can use that bin to have access to any spring bin or properties and uh, also binding out so you can print stuff just by saying out and let's say print out uh, you know system dot out uh, print ln you just say out out and then you get output string so it's a shorter version but we, we could um, add any other things you guys need or want here to be accessible on the wearable interface then here we create a compiler configuration for Groovy. That's more like vanilla configuration on Groovy, not a big deal. And then there's a script result. It's a JSON form of what will be uh, resulted of this group, uh, Groovy script. And it has an output and a result. And um, basically uh, this has been uh, take care in sense of, uh, you know, for, uh, formatting. So it's been formatted and that's it. Um, now, the only other thing I want to show quickly is the embedded HTML part. Um, so there's this uh, some JavaScript code here. There's an index.html. And the index on the .html, uh, there is a combo box uh, where we point out the specific gro Groovy scripts. And these Groovy scripts are in this example folder. So if you want to add a Groovy script, just drop something here and then going to be accessible to the... Uh, application right so you need to drop here and add the line here right um this, this javascript application is mainly using uh groovy js and jquery uh to do uh the trick right i will not cover in much details but there is some css um and uh, there are some uh, images as well 
right? Okay, now let's go to the fun part. Uh, let me run this application. You will see that application gonna run just fine. It's pretty fast. It is not heavyweight at all. Okay, we are running. We also can see uh, the properties that was spit out here as our bean, right? And now if we go to our browser and we do localhost 880, we're gonna hit our controller, right? And if we do slash console, we're gonna get a Groovy Querable interface. And right away, we get a code called get environment info, right? So here you can see that we use the application context because we bind that with Groovy. And then I'm, I wanna get a thing called environment. I wanna know the profiles and I wanna know this specific property. And I run that and there we go. I don't have uh, active profiles uh, and I don't have that property, but that's fine. I have some other scripts like is today Friday. So here I'm using a calendar object in Java and I'm asking if the calendar equals Friday, so it's Friday, right? And if I execute, of course not, because today is Tuesday, it's not Friday. So uh, if I change this code a little bit, so Tuesday, right? And let's change it is Tuesday, right? And run, you're gonna see that's yes, right? So literally you can code uh, as big as you want uh, here and you can run it. That's super powerful because you can have pre baked uh, scripts for observability and debugging. So look like this one, I have it here to print all the configs, right? So I get that application context binding I created, uh, I get this bean and then I call all configs. And if I run this, voila, I have all uh, the environment variables that's super useful for uh, troubleshooting. Uh, and then I think I have uh, one more, this one here. This one here lists all spring beans, right? And I could use that to just uh, use that beans to call it, right? I can do for loops, I can do anything I want here because I'm coding on Groovy, right? So this is super powerful for observability, for troubleshooting. Of course, like I said before, you need to, uh, to secure it, you need to use carefully, uh, but uh, it can be quite uh, useful for your applications. Okay, so I hope you guys like it. Uh, see you next time. Take care, guys. Cheers.